Okay, uh, we're going to uh, pick up here, uh, chapter 17, we started talking about electrochemistry. And uh, remember, electrochemistry is really uh, redox reactions. And really, redox reactions are really two things, oxidation or reduction, and they always occur together. So... If somebody gets oxidized, somebody else will get reduced and vice versa. Definition of oxidation, there are a few, but uh, the main one that we look at here in general chemistry is the loss of electrons, uh, while reduction is the gaining of electrons. And it also has a couple of other sort of uh, definitions as well. Uh, so these are really the uh, big classification reactions as we talked about uh, and as you probably learned again in Chem 50, uh, these are the reactions like our synthesis reactions, our uh, decomposition reactions, single replacement reactions, combustion reactions. Uh, they all sort of fall under the redox sort of category. And again, it involves really a transfer of electrons, which is one of the reasons why a reaction takes place. Uh, again, some people remember this through uh, Leo the Lion Goes Gur or the oil rig. Uh, obviously, oxidizing is losing, reducing is gaining, loss of electrons, oxidation, gaining of electrons, reduction. And what we really look at, as we'll talk about here today again a little bit more, is the oxidation state or oxidation number of elements, for example, as they go from the reactive side to the product side. And again, a very simple way, if you're not sure how to determine oxidation and reduction, is again, you could use just a basic number line. And you really can follow the oxidation state of whatever element you're looking at from the reactants to the products. And if that oxidation state be, starts moving in sort of the positive direction here, uh, that means that it has really lost some electrons, which is why it's positive. It's got more protons than electrons. And that thing will go through the oxidation. As opposed to if you find yourself looking at oxidation states and it's sort of moving in the negative direction, uh, it will then be a reduction. And that's a result of it gaining electrons along the way. So I think we looked at uh, something like uh, this here to finish out last time, I think. Two there. And when we look at something like this, uh, we can assign oxidation states to each of these things. And one of the first rules about oxidation state is pretty much anything that is in its standard state, not combined with anything else, will have an oxidation state of zero. So both of these guys here are, again, naturally how they come. Uh, it is when, for example, the magnesium and the oxygen get together that they actually do sort of gain electrons. Uh, they made here an ionic compound, so the oxidation state will be the same as the charges we normally assume with. That'll be plus two and minus two. And once again, we can follow the change in oxidation state. For example, for the magnesium, started at zero, again, ended at uh, minus or plus two, which means it is moving in that oxidation direction or becoming more positive. Oxygen started at zero and ended at minus two, uh, which means it is moving in that negative direction, uh, which means it's going through reduction. So this is our oxidation. This is being oxidized. This is being reduced. And remember that the nice thing about this is if you could basically figure out one of the guys, either what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, uh, by default, pretty much the other substance is doing the opposite thing because uh, they always do occur together. Uh, we also talked about um, oxidizing agents, I think. And reducing agent. And the oxidizing agent and reducing agent are different, again, than what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. Uh, basically, the oxidizing agent is always the guy that gets reduced. And the reducing agent is always the guy that gets oxidized. And again, they're called that because, again, uh, for example, the oxidizing agent uh, will have to get reduced, which means it has to gain electrons. So it has to cause somebody else to lose electrons. 
So it's causing somebody else to be oxidized, which is why it's again called the oxidizing agent. Uh, the reducing agent is the opposite. The thing that's getting oxidized will lose electrons. The process of that means somebody else will gain those electrons and it will cause the reduction in the other substance. So in this particular example here, our reducing agent is the magnesium. Our oxidizing agent there would be the oxygen. And by the way, those things are always found on the left-hand side of the arrow, the oxidizing agent, the reducing agent, uh, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. You know, those are really where we find those things. We can also break these things up into uh, their respected half reactions. And because really an oxidation reduction reaction is those two parts, uh, we can really break it apart into those two reactions taking place. So in this case, we could take the magnesium, uh, that would actually go to magnesium with a plus two charge, and it would give off four electrons. This would be our oxidation half reaction. We know it's the oxidation half reaction because of the location of our electrons here. Yeah, So our electrons are on the product side, which means they're like getting being given off or released. And that's uh, typically what we see. The same number of electrons will find them their self over here on the reactant side and react with our oxygen. And that will give us these two guys. And this would be our reduction half reaction, where the electrons are always on the reactant side, like they are being gained. In terms of electrons in a redox reaction, it's always the same number of electrons as being lost as to what is being gained. Everything is sort of balanced that way. So however many electrons somebody loses, somebody else will pretty much pick them up uh, along the way. We can add these two half reactions together and in the basic sort of simple redox reactions, the one thing that you always want to make sure of is uh, before you add them together, that you do have the same number of electrons on in both half reactions. In this case, we do. If it comes across a time where you don't have the same number of half re, uh, electrons in each half reaction, uh, you pretty much just need to multiply that half reaction by a common number to sort of get it to the same number of electrons. Uh, sometimes you may have to multiply both half reactions by numbers to get them to the same number of electrons. The purpose of that is really the idea of a redox reaction, which is this transfer of electrons which means they should perfectly always cancel out when you add them together. You should never have electrons left over when you put it back together into the overall reaction. Uh, everybody on the left stays on the left in this case. And again, everybody on the right there will stay on the right. Here we actually have two ions coming together that will get us the two magnesium oxide in this case. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> This should always be the case, uh, what we see here in terms of oxidation and reduction uh, when we have an ionic compound, because as you should know, right, uh, it is typically the metal that should always lose electrons to the non-metal. So whenever you got basically a metal and a non-metal together in a sort of an ionic compound, uh, your metal should always be the one that's really going through oxidation. Your non-metal should always be the one that is uh, basically accepting those electrons and going through reduction. Any questions on any of that there? <clears throat> Another example here, we have our calcium and our oxygen coming together. And once again, if we assign some oxidation states, calcium in this natural state, they're going to be zero. Oxygen going to be zero. The calcium here will gain a plus two charge. And once again, here, our oxygen will get our negative two charge. And here... If you ignore the whole metal, non-metal aspect of this, we can still figure it out. Calcium, again, starting at zero in this oxidation state, ending at plus two, moving in that more positive direction and going through oxidation. Oxygen here, again, starting at zero, ending at minus two, which would be moving in that more negative direction, which means it is going through reduction. That would be our oxygen. So once again, here, as we could predict in this particular example, it is our metal that is going through oxidation. It is our non-metal that is going through reduction. And just like the previous example, that would make this the oxidizing agent and this guy our reducing agent in this particular case. We could break it up into our half reactions here. 
And once again, we do see on our oxidation half reaction, our electrons on the product side, reduction half reaction, electrons are on the reactant side. You should never, ever put electrons on the same side of the arrow because they always need to cancel out. Yeah, and you definitely did one of them wrong and probably in that case. Uh, if we did add everything together, we're just going to basically subtract these guys from the other side, giving us our overall reaction again here that is taking place. <clears throat> So as we talked about previously, there are reducing and oxidizing agents. Uh, again, our oxidizing agent always got getting reduced as it will basically um, accept those electrons, which means somebody has to lose them. And our reducing agent, again, uh, going to be oxidized as it is going to cause a reduction of somebody else. Calcium in the previous example there, as I mentioned, is our reducing agent and oxygen there was our oxidizing agent. Now, as I mentioned maybe uh, the other day, but let's just talk about it as well. There are a couple of other definitions of oxidation and reduction. And those other definitions are most of the time used most likely in organic chemistry. Um, and again, uh, but they do sometimes still pop up. So let's just make sure so when we talk about oxidation, the sort of three definitions that you could think about is the one that we just talked about, which obviously is losing electrons. It could also mean that somebody gains oxygen as you go from reactants to products or loses hydrogen as you go from reactants to products. So those are kind of three definite definitions of oxidation that we sometimes come across. Reduction is pretty much the opposite there. Um, it is our gaining of electrons. It is our loss of oxygen as you go from reactants to products. And it is the gaining of H2 as you go from reactants to products or gaining of hydrogen. <laughs> so if we look at this particular case here of this reaction, uh, we could actually look at some of those other definitions to help us along. If we look at our tin here, our tin has oxygen on the left-hand side. Over here, tin has no oxygen. So as it went from reactants to products, it has lost oxygen, which means this guy should be going through reduction. By default, that should mean obviously that our carbon here should be going through oxidation, but we could also verify that as well. When we look at carbon, it has no high oxygen there, but when it gets to the other side, it does have oxygen. So it did gain oxygen as it went from left to right there, uh, which means it's going through the oxidation process. That is also why in this particular case, our carbon is our reducing agent as it is the thing being oxidized. And this guy here would be our oxidizing agent. In this case, the tin. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> Now, in this particular case, because you actually did have a metal, you could still go by oxidation number and still figure it out without looking at oxygens. If we look at our tin over here on the left-hand side, oxygen is minus two, tin here would be plus four in this case. Over here, tin is zero in terms of its oxidation number. So again, if you just wanted to look at the tin to help you figure that out, you could. Plus four is over here and it ends at zero, which means the tin here is moving in a negative direction, which tells us it is obviously, as we know, the guy going through reduction. And if you were able to determine that from tin, uh, by default, again, the carbon would has to be going through oxidation. So in this case, there's a couple of ways you could kind of determine it. Uh, they all should lead you to the same sort of result. Again, for the most part, uh, we use a lot of this in more organic chemistry. Uh, more organic chemistry is uh, obviously involving non-metals, non-metals sharing of electrons. So a lot of times we don't have a lot of metals sort of involved. So it's much easier to just look at did something gain oxygen or lose hydrogen along the way, um, rather than maybe looking at oxidation states and uh, sort of uh, electrons. <clears throat> Any questions on that there? All right. So let's. I'll talk about officially just to make sure again, everybody's on the same page here in terms of how you apply sort of our 
apply oxidation state or calculate oxidation states. Oxidation states and oxidation numbers are basically the same thing. Some people call them numbers, some people call them states. Uh, but it's basically the charge that the atom uh, would have in that molecule or an ionic compound if the electrons were completely transferred. So there is sort of one big uh, misconception sometimes people have, or I guess trouble that people have with oxidation numbers is at this point, you know, they beat into your head the sort of normal charges we think of when we think about elements. And really those charges are really for our ionic compounds. Like when we go, everybody in group one, seven is minus one, everybody in group, you know, six there is minus two and so forth. And that is definitely true. And that is still the case when we're dealing with oxidation numbers and an ionic compound. Pretty much if you have an ionic compound, whatever the normal charges are, will be their oxidation numbers. What confuses people sometimes is when we get into situations where we're really not dealing with an ionic compound where electrons have been completely transferred, but we're dealing more with a covalent sort of compound or molecular compound where everybody is sharing electrons. And in the case of when things are sharing electrons, uh, what can happen is, is actually like things like electronegativity that plays a really big role in terms of how the charge of that particular element will be. So sometimes as we will see things like chlorine in a more say covalently bonded situation where they're sharing electrons, will actually take on a more positive sort of charge than it does in an ionic compound. So oxidation state and sort of ionic charge are not necessarily always the same thing. They don't always agree. Uh, it does depend on whether it is sort of an ionic uh, compound or bond or more of a covalent bond. So things that we normally associate sometimes with negative charges like chlorine, bromine, all those guys, uh, we can sometimes be positive in terms of their oxidation number. And the real difference is because it's actually in a sharing of electron sort of situation. So let's talk about some of the rules that's really important, which is uh, obviously some of the things we've just been talking about. Anytime you have pretty much any element by itself, uncombined, not bonded to anything, uh, that's going to have an oxidation state of zero, basically, or number of zero. Uh, that includes our diatomic molecules like H2O2. That's naturally how they come. So that would be zero. If you have really a uh, monoatomic ion, really something in an ionic sort of compound, it will really be the same sort of charge uh, will be its oxidation number. So if you had like iron three chloride, the iron would have a plus three oxidation state. The chlorine there would have a minus one oxidation state. Oxygen is usually minus two. And I'll be honest with you, that is for the most part uh, where pretty much most people should start when you're assigning oxidation numbers is with oxygen. There is a case though where oxygen will not be minus two. It can be minus one. And that's the case where it's actually peroxide, which is this guy here, polyatomic ion. And in that case, oxygen will be uh, minus one. The deal, how you know it is maybe oxygen versus peroxide is usually there's like an extra two kind of hanging out there. Or you have something like sodium peroxide. So you got kind of that extra two that kind of pops in there uh, rather than if you had maybe <clears throat> sodium oxide in this case, uh, which would be something like that. Uh, there's that extra two on the bottom one and not on the top one. I would say probably 99% of the time, if you see an oxygen, it's probably going to be just oxygen with a minus two oxidation state. But again, if it happens to be peroxide, it will be minus one. Oxidation state of hydrogen is plus one, except when it comes after a metal. And that is when it is really hydride. So if you have something like LiH, that is lithium with a plus one charge, and that is hydrogen, which is a minus one charge, which is hydride in that particular case. But other than that, again, hydrogen is pretty much going to be plus one. Anybody in group one or group two will have their normal sort of charge of plus one and plus two, and fluorine is always negative one. The other important thing is when you add up the grand total of all the oxidation numbers or states in a molecule or ion, it needs to equal the same charge as that molecule or ion. So if it is a neutral molecule, then when you add up all your oxidation numbers, you should hit zero. 
And obviously, if it is a ion that has a charge, it should all add up to whatever the charge may be. If it's a negative two, all the oxidation numbers should end up at negative two. So if we look at something like bicarbonate here, which is HCO3 minus, I would say in a situation like this where you have three things, it's usually a good idea to start on the right-hand side, go to the left-hand side, and kind of save the guy in the middle for the end. So in this case, if we were to assign oxidation states, oxygen here is minus two, and there are three of them, which gives us like a minus six. Going to the other side, hydrogen is plus one. So this would be plus one. Now, overall here, all these things need to add up to minus one in this case. And that means here to get to minus one, our carbon should have an oxidation state of plus four in this case. And if we add all those numbers together, that's plus five and a minus six is a minus one. Our oxidation numbers do add up here. Now, it's really important when you give oxidation numbers or states and you write them down and you're asked, what is the oxidation number or state of these things? In this particular example, the correct answer for hydrogen would be plus one. Correct answer for carbon would be plus four. And the correct answer for oxygen would be minus two, not the grand total of minus six, which is a very common mistake that sometimes people make. The other thing that you need to do is when you do oxidation numbers, you do need to include the charge. Yeah. So if it's a positive, you need to write positive. Uh, if it's negative, you need to write the negative. Don't let me choose because I'll do it wrong. Yes. And give you an X. So make sure you include the charges when you're doing oxidation numbers. Any questions on that there? All right, so I want you to take a moment here and for each of these, assign the oxidation numbers for everybody. Let's take a look and see. Uh, so uh, here we have lithium oxide. So uh, oxygen here is gonna be minus two and lithium with its group one will be its normal plus one in this case, since it is an ionic compound. So lithiums would be plus one, oxygen here would be minus two in this case. Coming over to uh, PF3, fluorine is always minus one, and there are three of them, which gives you a minus three. Uh, there's no charge happening here, which means to balance it out, it is going to be plus three there for the phosphorus. The phosphorus here would be plus three. Fluorine here would be minus one, not minus three or anything like that. Now, <clears throat> coming down here to nitric acid, Oxygen is going to be minus two. That's going to give us a grand total of minus six. Going to the other side, hydrogen will be plus one. And in this particular case, there is no charge, so it does need to equal zero. So the nitrogen in this case will actually be having a plus five charge, which should get us to zero. Hydrogen, again, being plus one. Uh, nitrogen being plus five. And once again here, oxygen being minus two, not minus six in terms of its oxidation number. Lastly here, uh, we got dichromate. So that's gonna be a minus two for the oxygen. Gonna give us a minus 14 overall. Overall charge here is minus two. There happens to be two of the chromiums here. So do a little math problem there, each chromium does equal plus six in this case, as that would get us plus 12 minus 14 equals minus two in this case. Gives us our chromium of plus six and our oxygen here of minus two. Any questions on those assignments there? So this illustrates what I was talking about a second ago. If we look, for example, at something like phosphorus there in PF3, we sketch up the Lewis structure there for phosphorus. We remember sort of how to do that there. Something like this. Now, we normally think of phosphorus, right, as being like a negative three and sort of an ionic compound. But in this case, it's actually sharing electrons. And between phosphorus and Fluorine, the one that's more electronegative is fluorine, right? Which means the electrons in this case are all going to be heading towards the fluorine. 
And what that's going to do is make this phosphorus more and more positive until in this particular case, it's taken on a more positive three sort of situation. As these electrons are not transferred, but they are basically heading closer to the fluorine, like they would be transferred in that particular case towards the three fluorines, right? As we get the plus three charge going on there. Same thing here with nitrogen. We normally associate as minus three in an ionic compound. If you sketch up a little nitric acid type picture, it looks something like this. And in this particular case, once again, nitrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is further to the right of nitrogen, which means it's more electronegative. So same deal, electrons basically heading away from the nitrogen. So by sharing electrons with all those three oxygens, it is making our nitrogen here in this particular case more positive than it does in an ionic compound where it's actually the recipient of all those electrons coming to it from the metal. So again, that's why when we have some of these charges, they are different than what we assume in a ionic compound uh, because here in a covalent compound, they are sharing electrons and electronegativity difference plays a much bigger role. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> um, all right, so we talked about earlier balancing uh, redox reactions. And when you have kind of simple redox reactions uh, where you basically have the oxidation half reaction, the reduction half reaction, pretty much the only thing you have to kind of worry about is just kind of adding them back together, making sure that our electrons are the same in both half reactions. When we get into a little bit more complicated sort of redox reactions, when we balance them in either acidic or basic conditions, there's a little bit more work that you have to do when you balance these type of redox reactions. So we're going to go through it again, just to make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of all this stuff. Um, so to do this, the first thing is, uh, you might want to just kind of figure out what is going on in terms of who's being oxidized, who's being reduced, as it will help you later on as you balance these reactions to make sure you didn't hopefully mess up. So if we look at this unbalanced sort of redox reaction here, and we want to balance it in acidic conditions to start with, the first thing I'm going to do is just assign oxidation numbers like we just talked about. So this is iron two, which means it has a plus two oxidation state. Uh, this is the guy we just did, uh, which ended up with a plus six oxidation state. Iron over here is iron three, and chromium three would also be chromium three in this case. So once again, if you're not sure what is happening, we'll just use our little number line idea here. So if we look at the iron, it is starting at plus two, which is like here. And on the other side, iron ends at plus three, which means it is moving in that direction there which means it's becoming more positive. So that is going through oxidation. By default, that means that this guy should be going through reduction. And we could verify that by doing the same thing. The chromium is starting at plus six, which is like here. And it is ending at plus three, which is heading in this direction. So it's becoming more negative in that case. So it definitely is going through reduction. That also means in our case here, the reducing agent would be which one? The reducing agent is the thing that gets oxidized. So that would be our reducing agent. And our oxidizing agent would really be the chromium. But that whole thing there would be really the oxidation agent. Any questions on how to assign oxidation states, figure out what is being oxidized, what is being reduced? Really important in this chapter that you can figure that out relatively quickly uh, in terms of what is being oxidized, what is being reduced. Any questions on that? <clears throat> All right. So again, always a great, great idea to kind of do that. So you have an idea of what's going on. The next thing that you want to do is take this reaction and basically split it up into its two half reactions. The easiest way to do that is just take the two things that are the same on both sides, what elements go together, basically. So in this case, I got an iron on the left. And I also have an iron on the right. So definitely those guys are related. And I got something with chromium here on the left. And I got a chromium on the right. So that's going to split us off into our half reactions. And now by knowing what we just did, 
We do know that the iron here is our oxidation half reaction and our chromium is our reduction half reaction. So that will help us out hopefully. All right, so once you basically split it off into its half reactions, the next thing that you wanna do is basically just balance it like a normal equation. And you wanna balance all the elements except for oxygen and hydrogen. So we wanna balance all elements except oxygen and hydrogen. So in this case, looking at the iron, we have one iron on one side, one on the other. It doesn't matter the charge, just how many of them they have. On the left-hand side of the second equation, we got two chromiums. On the right-hand side of the second equation, we only have one. So we're gonna balance it by putting a coefficient just like a normal equation. So we will put a two in front of it. Now that we've balanced all the elements besides uh, oxygen and hydrogen, it is now really oxygen and turn and hydrogen as well. So to balance the oxygen, we're going to balance it by putting water to balance the oxygen. And we would put water on whatever side needs the oxygen. The problem though, when we add water, we're not just adding oxygen, but we are adding hydrogen. So we got to make sure we take care of that as well. Otherwise we will not be balanced. So to one side gets the water, the other side gets two H pluses for every water that you add. And that will balance out the hydrogen. So you're not short hydrogens at the end. So one side gets water, other side gets two H pluses for every water that you add. By the way, if you happen to start out with a half reaction where you have more hydrogens on one side than the other, you could just add H pluses to the other side and that will balance it out as well. So sometimes you may have a half reaction where there's hydrogen on one side and none on the other side to start with. So just to balance it out, you could add some H plus to the other side. Otherwise, again, you'll be short at the end in terms of hydrogen. So if we look at this here, obviously there is no oxygen in the first half reaction. Second half reaction, there's seven oxygens. That means to the second one, we're going to lay up seven waters to balance out the oxygen. And now that we put seven waters in there, we then need to put 14 H pluses to the other side to balance out the hydrogens that we just added. Any questions up to that point? <clears throat> At this point, we are uh, good, hopefully on everything. We balance all the elements, we balance oxygen, we balance hydrogen. Now we're to the part where we're going to balance the charge on each side. So we're going to balance the charge by adding electrons. Now the purpose of this is to make sure that the overall charge on each side of each half reaction is the same. They do not need to equal zero, uh, but they do need to equal the same number. So the easiest way to do this, and sometimes people go, go by element, it's a waste of time. And you can might as well just take the overall charge of everything because the overall charge basically tells you the oxidation state when they're all added together. So if we look at the top half reaction here, that has a plus two overall. This has a plus three overall. So the side that needs the electrons is the right-hand side, and we need one electron, which will provide a minus one charge to give us a plus two on the left and a plus two on the right there. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> Doing the same thing on the bottom, this guy will contribute plus 14. This entire thing will contribute the charge, which is minus two. That is a plus 12 happening there. No need to go individually in each of those elements. The overall charge basically does the adding for you. This is gonna give us a plus six on the right, and this is gonna give us a zero. So in this case, we actually need to add electrons to the left-hand side, and we do need to add six electrons here. I'll pop it there. By adding six electrons, that's gonna give me a minus six. Minus six and plus 12 gives me a plus six there to match the plus six that I have on the right-hand side. So now we are balanced on each half reaction there. 
Any questions on that there? <clears throat> now, the purpose of sort of figuring out what is being oxidized and what is being reduced is we could check ourselves at this point. You should never add electrons to the same side. In the first half reaction, we determined it was an oxidation, which means electrons should end up there on the product side, so that's good. Second one, we determined it's a reduction reaction, which means electrons should end up on the reactant side. That is also good. So again, that's a good way you could kind of check yourself to make sure you really did add it to the correct side. Any questions on that so far there? All right, I'm just gonna kind of clean up some of this math here. All right, so now that we've added electrons, we're almost ready to add these back together. But just like in a basic, simple redox reaction, uh, we cannot add them together unless we have the same number of electrons in each half reaction. And in this case, we obviously do not. We have one here and six here. So before we could add them together, we will need to multiply the entire top guy by six. And that's going to allow us to have the same number of electrons in each half reaction. So I'm just going to write that below it. That will give me six of the iron two uh, goes to six of the iron three plus six electrons. Now that I have the same number of electrons in each half reaction, I could add those together. The electrons once again should always cancel out. Electron goes away, electron goes away. And I think that is everything that's going to cancel out in this case. Uh, so we're going to just keep everybody on the left-hand side on the left, everybody on the right on the right. That would give me uh, 14 H pluses plus our Cr2O7 2 minus plus our six of our iron two going to our two of our Cr3 plus plus our seven waters and our six of the iron three in this case. <laughs> now, if I did this correctly here, this would be balanced in acidic conditions. And the way I know that I did it correctly is it should be balanced really in two ways. It should be balanced like a normal chemical reaction, which means you have the same number of elements on both sides. So if you look at it, we got uh, 14 hydrogens on the left, 14 on the right, two chromiums on the left, two on the right. Uh, we got seven oxygens on the left, seven on the right, six irons on both sides, so that's good. And it should be balanced in terms of overall charge on each side. This will contribute a plus 14. This guy will contribute a minus two. That will contribute a plus 12. That's a lot of math right now, but I'm going to go with uh, 24, I think, if I did that right. That is a uh, plus 6. And that is a 0. And that is a plus 18, which I hope also gives me a plus 24 uh, in this particular case. And it is balanced in both ways, both in terms of elements and also charge. Any questions on how to balance that there? By the way, I know that this is actually balanced in acidic conditions because what do I see in my final equation? I see our friend H plus, yes. So H plus there is our acid, right? So that is how you could tell that this has been balanced basically in acidic conditions. So any questions on balancing in acidic conditions here? All right, now let's also talk about, since we have this one here, how we would go about balancing it in basic conditions. There are a couple of different ways you could do it, but I think the easiest way to do it is to really do what we just did, pretty much just balance it in acidic conditions. And at the end, what you could do is basically turn it into basic conditions at the very end. So if we were going to do this in uh, basic conditions, and I'll just do it towards the top here, I go copy that equation. Let's get rid of some of this here. So if we were going to do basic conditions, all we need to do is really just balance it in acidic conditions. And we will end up with our nicely balanced acidic equation like we have on the bottom there. 
And we'll take that equation at this point and turn it into basic by, first off, copying it correctly would be good, 14 H pluses plus Cr2O72 minus plus our six of our iron two goes to two of our Cr3 plus seven waters and six of the iron three. All right, so at this point, what you want to do is, if it is basic, follow the acidic prompt there. And now what we're going to do actually is add OH minus for basic. We're going to add OH minus to both sides. Now, how much OH minus we're going to add is always going to be equal to the number of H pluses you have. So in this case here, we have 14 H pluses. That means to the left-hand side, we add 14 OH minuses. And to the right-hand side here, 14 OH minuses we're going to add in this case. Now that we have added 14 OH minuses to both sides, on the side where we have OH minus and H plus, those two guys come together to make water. So we'll have 14 waters will basically come from that. And usually what will happen in this case is you'll have some waters you can reduce down. We got seven on the other side, 14 on this side, subtract seven to the other side. That is going to leave us seven waters plus our dichromate, plus our iron two, goes to our CR3 plus, plus our six of our iron three, and our 14 OH minuses. And if we did this correctly, this should now be balanced in basic conditions. Still should be balanced both ways. I got me 14 hydrogens on the left and right. I have 14 oxygens on the left and the right, two chromiums, six irons on both sides, overall charge zero there, minus two, plus 12. That is a plus 10 for the left. That is a plus six. That is a plus 18. That is a minus 14. So that is a uh, plus four and plus six basically gets you a plus 10. So we are good on both sides. We also know that this is balanced in basic conditions because unlike the other one, we now see hydroxide there, right, in it. So we know it's balanced in basic conditions. Any questions on how to do this fun stuff? I don't remember if they teach you this in 50 anymore. Did they teach you anything? Okay, I just want to make sure. All right. All right, so let's do one more here just to make sure that you could do one yourself since you are professionals, I hear. So that's good. To... Why don't we try... The same thing we just talked about. There's one here. All right, so then why don't you balance this one in basic conditions, also identify the oxidizing agent, the reducing agent, what is going through oxidation, and what is going through reduction. And why don't you assign oxidation numbers as well. All right. All right, balance it up in basic conditions, see what you come up with. Okay, let's take a look to see how you're doing. So I'm just going to start uh, with assigning oxidation numbers. Uh, so we got a minus one for our I here. Oxygen here will be minus two. That gives us a minus eight. Overall, it's a negative one. Uh, that looks like a plus seven there for the MN. I2 is in a natural state, so that's going to be a zero. Starting over here with the oxygen, it's going to be minus two. There's two of them, which would be minus four which means, again, here our MN should be plus four. In this case, uh, our I minus is going from minus one to zero. It is actually becoming more positive in that case, if you follow on that number line, right? So basically going from minus one to zero, heading in that direction, uh, which means it is going through oxidation. 
the MN is starting at plus seven and ending at plus four, which is going in that direction, becoming more negative. So it is this guy here that is going through reduction. And that means that uh, the I minus here would be our reducing agent and our MNO4 minus, which is really the permanganate, or really the MN here would be our oxidizing agent in that case. Yeah. Any questions on any of those assignments there? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now we've got some of the basics out of the way there. We're going to break it off into its half reactions. So uh, we're going to go I minus to I2. And we're going to go MnO4 minus to MnO2. So the next thing that we want to do is, uh, again, this is our oxidation. This is our reduction. We're going to balance everybody but oxygen and hydrogen. In this case, we do need to put a two there for the I. Uh, in case of the MN, we have well, one on each side, so that's okay. Now we're going to balance our oxygen by adding water to whichever one needs oxygen. So there's no oxygen in the first one. But in the second one, we have four oxygens on the left, two on the right, which means we do need two waters over here. Remember, because we added two waters, we also need to add four H pluses in this case to the other side so that we do not come up short on any hydrogens. At this point, we pretty much have balanced everybody out. Um, so now we're ready to balance out our charge by adding electrons. Overall charge here on the left is minus two. Overall charge here on the right is zero. That means that the right-hand side here will need two electrons to get us to minus two on both sides. Looking at the bottom here, that is going to be plus four. This entire thing is going to be minus one. That is a plus three happening there. This is a zero and this is a zero, which means obviously since electrons are negative, we would need to add it to the left-hand side. In this case, we would need three electrons, uh, which obviously would give us a minus three and a zero on both sides. Any questions on the electron adding part there? All right, so I'm just gonna again, clear up some of the numbers here so there's not too much in the way. Okay, now that we have that, we want to add these back together. But in this particular case, uh, we can't do that because we do have different numbers of electrons, obviously, in both half reactions. Uh, so we need a same number. So obviously, just multiply them by the opposite numbers. Uh, six here, obviously, would be our common number that we need to end up with. So we need to multiply the top half reaction by three. Bottom half reaction by two. So I'm going to recopy each of these underneath. And that would give us, taking the top one, six of the iodide goes to three of the I2 and six electrons. Distributing my two here for the bottom gives me uh, six electrons plus uh, eight H pluses plus two of the MnO4 minus goes to two of my MnO2 plus my four waters. And by the way, since I previously identified that as reduction, I do have the electrons on the correct side. Oxidation also have electrons on the correct side. Now we're good to go to add these back together. So remember again, electrons should always cancel. So they do in this case. And here again, I think that's all that's going to cancel. Everybody on the left will stay there. So we'll have uh, eight H pluses plus two MnO4 minus <clears throat> plus six of the iodide. Gives us three I2 plus uh, two MnO2 and four waters. Technically speaking, if I want to stop at acidic conditions, I would be done at this case. That should be the balance in acidic conditions. And again, we have eight hydrogens on both sides, two MNs. Uh, we got eight oxygens on both sides, and we also have six. Overall charge on the left there is uh, zero, and overall charge on the right is zero. So uh, we're good in terms of acidic conditions. Again, here we were looking for basic conditions. So now we're going to turn this into basic conditions. And in this case, we're going to add OH minus to both sides. 
that again is equal to the amount of H plus that we have. So since we do have eight of these guys here, that's going to give us eight OH minuses and eight OH minuses. Once again, we will combine these into eight waters that will reduce down by subtracting the four from the other side, leaving us a final, hopefully balanced equation of four waters plus two of the MnO4 minus plus six of the iodides. Three of the I2s plus two of the MnO2 plus eight OH minus action there. Put a box around it, it makes it more official, I think. Uh, but we are balancing basic conditions as we see the OH minus there. And again, we should still be balanced. Uh, so just quickly looking at it, eight hydrogens on the left, eight on the right. Uh, we got actually 12 oxygens on the left and we have eight and fours, 12 on the right. Six of the iodides on both sides. Overall charge on the left is minus two and minus six is minus eight. And overall charge on the right is minus eight as well. So again, it is balanced in both ways there. Any questions? Like, yeah. Uh, so when you're adding the hydroxide to both sides to turn it into basic, it should always equal the amount of H pluses that you have. So whatever that number is would be how many you would want to add to both sides. Yeah. You, you don't have to. This is uh, probably the easiest approach. The other way where you could turn it into basic is like right in the middle. Like right before you, uh, right before you add your electrons, you could add the OH minuses to both sides, and that's an approach that sometimes people will do. Um, the problem I see with that approach is, I used to do it that way too, but uh, you have a lot of waters and combining and stuff. You got to kind of reduce down right in the middle of all the action there of what you're doing. So sometimes people get a little confused and, and miss some things. Uh, so sometimes it's a lot easier just to wait to the end and turn it. But the other way that you would do it is. In the step before we added the electrons, after you kind of balanced everything, uh, then you could add your OH minuses to both half reactions, kind of combo in the um, uh, to waters and reduce down the waters and stuff like that. But sometimes it gets a little crowded at that point to do it. Uh, but that's the other sort of approach. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in terms of when you're done balancing yeah so uh, to answer your question when you're done balancing in either acidic or basic conditions when you're done balancing in acidic conditions there should be only one h plus not not one but there should just be like h plus on one side and uh when you're done balancing in basic conditions there should be just oh minus there by itself they do so that's how we got the eight waters here before we reduced it is that basically eight OH minuses and the eight H pluses, they will combine because H plus and OH minus has a really strong attraction to each other and they'll come together to make the eight waters. And that's always what will happen when you do the basic sort of balancing. When you have that OH minus to the side that had the H plus, those guys will always combine to make water. And that's typically why then you usually will have to reduce down that water because you have some waters on the other side. So they'll kind of reduce down in most cases. Yeah. Other questions? <clears throat> Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want to do another one? Or are we good? You want, all right, we'll do one more. Let's make sure. Let's do this. Uh, let's do, actually, let's do, why not? Let's do this one. That looks like fun. I don't know. Let's do it in acidic conditions here. We did a couple of basic ones. This is we're getting then. Let's take a look and see how we're doing. Uh, so we'll start with our oxidation states. I think we did this one earlier as well. So that's going to be a plus six here still for our chromium and minus two for oxygen. Uh, minus two here is minus eight. Uh, minus two overall for the oxalate. Uh, so um, eight, six, two plus three looks like a winner there. And this would be plus three for our chromium and a minus two for our oxygen gives us a plus four. So in terms of the chromium here, uh, we are going at plus six and ending at plus three. 
which means it is becoming more negative, so it is going through reduction. Our carbon in this case is plus three and ending at plus four, which is going in that direction there, more positive, which means it is being oxidized. Once again, that would mean that this guy here would be our oxidizing agent and this guy here would be our reducing agent. Yeah. Any questions on any of those there? All right, then we're gonna split it off here. So chromium with chromium seems like a good move. Also, I always want to say copper, carbon with carbon, be good. Could be like copper, maybe. All right, so uh, we're going to balance everything other than obviously oxygen and hydrogen here. So in this case, we do need to put a two looks like here for our chromium. We actually, in this case, need to put a two here for our copper, as not copper, see, I said it, uh, carbon as well, um, to balance those guys out. Now that we did that, uh, we are ready to balance out our oxygen. Top guy has seven on the left, none on the right. That's going to be seven waters over here. Since we added seven waters, we will need to add our 14 H pluses to the other side. Uh, by the way, this is our reduction, right? This is our oxidation. On the bottom here, we have four oxygens on the left. And actually, by putting the two in front there, gave us four oxygens on the right. So we're actually balanced here. We do not have to add any water to the bottom one. So that is good. That means we're ready to add electrons in this case. Uh, so overall here, we got a plus 14. Uh, that's a minus two. So that looks like a plus 12 happening there. On this side, that is a plus six and a zero, which gives us plus six. So to balance it out, we will need six electrons over here on our reactant side, which does make sense since this is a reduction reaction. So that's good at least. Uh, looking over here, this whole thing is minus two and this thing is zero, which means we will need two electrons over here, which also, excuse me, makes sense there because that is our oxidation half reaction. Any questions on that there? All right. Uh, so again, I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of our overall charges just to kind of clean it up a little bit here. Do that, do that, and that. All right. So we want to add these together, but uh, we have different numbers of electrons. In this case, it's actually just the bottom guy. I think we need to multiply by three. So I'll recopy that kind of over here-ish. So that's going to give us three of the C2O42 minus, uh, six of the CO2, and uh, six of the electrons. I'm just going to kind of put a line through it so I don't add it twice. Now we should be able to add it here. Electrons will cancel in this case. And looks like that might be it. So we are left with 14 H pluses plus our Cr2O72 minus plus our 3C2O42 minus. Right-hand side of the arrow, we got uh, two of the Cr3 pluses, seven waters, and six of the CO2. And that should do it for acidic conditions. Let's just verify real quick. Uh, we got 14 Hs and 14 Hs, so that's good. We got two Crs, two Crs. Uh, we have uh, six carbons, six carbons and oxygen. There are seven there and 12 more there. So that's like 19, if I count that right. And uh, we got uh, seven there and 12 there, which would be 19. Overall charge, plus 14, minus two, minus six. Too much math. Plus uh, what we got there, uh, six, I think. And here we have plus six, zero, and zero, which gives us plus six on both sides. And again, we know that it is balanced and acidic as we see H plus there. If we wanted to take this to the basic at this point, again, we would add 14 OH minus this to both sides. That would combo us 14 waters on the left, reduce down some waters, and we would be golden here. Yeah. Any questions on any of that there? All right, fun with redox, there it is.